How would it feel to have a thriving fitness business and have the freedom to enjoy life at the fullest? Well, that is exactly what the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Show is going to give you. My name is Matthew Park. This is Amy Filer. Hey, guys. And we are here to serve. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trainer Revenue Multiplier Show. My name is Amy Filer. I am your co-host today, and I am here with Greg McCoy. He's no stranger to TRM or the podcast. Greg, how are you? Hey, Jamie. I'm great. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. How is the holiday season treating you so far? Yeah, it's great. I enjoy this time of year. Um, it's a, you know traditionally like a little bit slower as we gear up for the new year, but mm-hmm. always try to balance things out, hang with the fam, do some fun stuff, and you know ready be ready to buckle down for the for next year. I love that. I love that, and I think this is such an important time of year to discuss this particular topic, which is strategic collaboration. So, if you guys listened to last week's podcast, it was about competition versus collaboration and how we really don't need to see one another in the fitness industry space as each other's competition, because not every client is going to be your flavor and that's how it should be. Right? So Greg, you have hidden gym and I've been to hidden gym several times now and hidden gym has a flavor. It is not a planet fitness and any time a snap, a, a good life for those friends in Canada. How would you describe the culture? of hidden gym. Yeah, we, um, we work hard to maintain a culture that's friendly, that's, um, inclusive, um, that we're purpose driven, uh, people that like to work hard. Um, you know, in my past gyms, we, we, um, had a stigma and on, not really, it was on purpose. I mean, we served bodybuilders and power lifters in, um, strong men in my first gym, Metroflex. When I moved um, to starting destination, we opened that up a little bit, but it was more just a bigger playground um, for that same demographic. And now with Hidden Gym and what I tried to start to implement um, in the final days of destination was we were a a work hard gym. And that didn't matter if you're working hard to lose baby weight or if you're working hard to win the Olympia, because we have those type of people working side by side. And it's not necessarily like, yeah, sure, their demographics are much different. One is might be a, a 30 year old male that's been bodybuilding his whole life and one might be a 55 year old female. But if they show up with the same mentality to work hard and they're not there to mess around, um, then then they coexist very well together. So that's the um, and we, we do that in a, a, an environment that's supportive and collaborative. So I would say that's kind of summarizes the culture that we aim to create here. So I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, you know, they would say, well, Greg, why would you as as a brick and mortar gym owner, why wouldn't you just take everybody? Like, why wouldn't you just let everything, you know, essentially just open up the doors to, I mean, granted your doors are open to everyone, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, what? what was your strategy in essentially finding your own golden 50 with hidden gym? Yeah. The analogy I like to use, cause it's the same for whether it's a training business, a gym business, probably any business. Yeah. Um, and I apologize. This is a hunting analogy. Um, I'm not a big hunter. I go hunting honestly only to, um, bond with Tana's dad. Cause that's I was what gonna he say your to wife's do. side of the family. I yeah. remember this discussion, your brother-in-law and your, your father-in-law. Yeah. Perfect. So, okay. So I go to opening day of dove season for the first time, which anyone that's been dove hunting, they fly over you like a million at a time. And as a true novice dove hunter, first day there have a shotgun that probably still has the price tag on it. Like, I'm just like, okay. Um, I'm just going to aim into the group and hope something falls. And I wasn't getting anything. And then, um, you know, a wiser, more experienced hunter told me, no, no son, you got to aim at one if you want to hit something. And that's so true in business. Like if you just aim into the pack, you're not going to hit anything. Um, Of course, like I might aim at a dove and hit his buddy. Um, And just like in business, like I've got, we've got our customers that we aim at. But if someone outside of that aim walks through the door, we're not going to turn them away. And sometimes those end up being great customers. They don't really fit, um, like I said, in a demographic that we were aiming at, but their mentality fits. Um, And so they were attracted to our marketing. So 
it, to aim at um, everyone is to aim at no one. And so you have to, you have got to pick who you want. And then of course, you're going to get um, spillover from all walks of life. Yep. Oh, hundred percent. That what a great analogy. That's so, I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, it's very similar to uh, hitting a nail with a wrecking ball. Yeah. Right. Why would you ever, cause now you're not right. It's, it's useless. It's no good. So let's talk about your marketing for a second. Cause again, brick and mortar, the more people you have, the more money you make. So how do you strategize your marketing? We'll get into collaborations in a second. Cause for that, I'm, I'm thinking more other companies, but how do you strategize your marketing towards the demographic? Yeah, I mean, we um, so we, we divide our member base and our client base up into segments and um, we kind of have an ideal like if you think of a pie chart um, and we want we, what does our ideal facility look like? Um, say that we're talking 2000 members. Do we want 2000 power lifters? Probably not because we're going to run out of chalk. Um, the toilets are going to get clogged. Um, we're not going to have enough uh, calibrated plates, you know. So, how many power lifters do you want? Uh, two, two hundred. Yeah. Um, how many CrossFit groups do you want? Not two thousand, because I'll never have enough road rigs ever. Um, how many bodybuilders do you want? How many boxing? You know, you understand. Yeah. Um, so we have this pie chart, and we just kind of keep a pulse on. Um, okay, like we're getting really heavy into powerlifting, like probably not the best time to continue to pump powerlifting meets and um, pictures of our calibrated plates and our specialty bars. Yeah. Who do we want more of? So that's the kind of material that we're going to put out because you attract what you market. And so we are pretty intentional about what, uh, who we're aiming at. And if we get too much of one thing, then we, we shift the focus. Okay. So that is the perfect segue into collaboration because you know, if, if you get, at least I know from CrossFit, right? If I start talking to someone who just moved to Clearwater about CrossFit, they're going to come to my box, right? So your database is about who you already know, and then subsequently who's in their network. So in terms of your organic marketing, how do you bring people into the hidden gym ecosystem? Like who you already know, who you've worked with or worked with in the past, how often do you do those reach outs? organically yeah so our number one lead source is referrals and we just we know and we've only had one month that disproves this theory but uh like our goal for instance every month is to get 300 total leads and 100 of those from referrals and we've missed the total lead number um pretty often it's a tough number to hit mm -hmm. but we have never we've only one time hit the referral number and missed our sales goal so we know like if we can get 100 referrals like the sales are going to take care of themselves so yeah. um we're asking we try to get at least three referrals with every new member that signs up um, we have all kinds of fun incentives to working out with friends one it you know it, it keeps them in the gym more um and two it gets us a new member so they get we give away gift cards uh t-shirts all kinds of different stuff and really push so that referral program is really our best organic marketing source. And again, this is something that applies whether you're an online trainer, an in-person trainer, or you own a brick and mortar gym, right? Yeah, because 100%. I mean, you can, every time you get a new client, um, you know, you ask them for referrals to even right in the beginning, um, yeah. you know, cause they're, they've just made a new commitment to change their life. They're going to tell somebody hopefully, yeah. Um, and so that would be the, the prime time to go for it. So Greg, this is your third gym and the other two are, I mean, it's not like they, they disappeared once you left them, right? Everyone knows Metroflex and, and a lot of people do know destination, but hidden gym is, is a hundred percent right up there. So how do you see the other ones as not competition? How do you stay in your own lane from a place of strength? Yeah, I so I think um, and I, I talk about this a lot in a lot of different contexts, but I don't think uh, one, we don't need a scarcity mentality in the fitness industry. Like if you just look at the biggest picture stats that there are, which is the population size and the number of people that have gym memberships and those that don't only 25 percent of the population even has a membership. 
So the rest of them, I mean, it's 75% of the, of the population that is fair game. So it would just be stupid for us to be tripping over ourselves, over the, the minority, you know? So yep. there's no reason to be angry or get into like tussles over a minority of the, the population. Um, in reality, like, I think as a gym industry and a health club industry and personal training industry, um, we're like, you know, kind of the battle of 300, right? Like we're a small group of people trying to, to uh, attack the army or the obesity pandemic. And we better fight together because or otherwise the world is just going to get fatter and unhealthier. And it's like, we, we need some form of collaboration if we're going to make impact. So I don't think there's any room for scarcity mentality in, in our profession at this point in time. When 90% of the world has a gym membership and they're all belong to somebody, yeah, yeah. it's going to be competitive. But at this point, there's no reason for it. Yep. Yep. It's, it's much. So again, essentially what you're saying is that go after the untapped market. Don't start poaching. Yeah. Right? Yep. Um, and we, I mean, and against my own words there, like, um, we are, um, we don't pull a lot of people off the couch to join hidden gym. So we're not, we're not focused on sedentary people. We're focused on the person that maybe joined, um, a low budget gym, um, that's $10 a month. And then they realize, look, I really like working out. Um, I don't really fit in here anymore, or I want to really see what I can do if I actually knew what I was doing. That's yes. when they graduate to a Metroflex, a destination or a hidden gym. So we are poaching out of there, but those those mainstream gyms, they are focused on the sedentary. So they we each have our place. And in fact, like my landlord um, was going to rent space in our parking lot to a Planet Fitness. I mean, literally, like I could throw a baseball and hit where Planet okay. Fitness was going to go. Okay. And he called me because I, I don't have any stipulations in my lease that prevent that. But he did tell me. So that was nice. But I said, you know what? That's fine. Like, I have no problem with that. Like, people aren't leaving Hidden Gym to go to Planet Fitness. I if promise. If anything, it's going to be the other way around, yeah. right? Let's use that gigantic Planet Fitness marketing budget to put them in my parking lot. And the oh, ones that shit. really like to work out hard are just going to walk across. They're just going to change parking spaces. Like, it's going to be the best. Like, it's a it's a good thing. And, yeah. and maybe if you don't like it here and you just want, you know, um, a less in, a less intimidating environment maybe they do go over there but it's probably more the other way than than that yep 100 percent. and and i can't tell you how many times we see in trm bringing it back to uh you know let's say one-on-one -on -one trainers sure. i can't tell you how many times we see trainers who are people's second choice right they get the people who have already suffered the metabolic damage or uh the overtraining syndrome from the person's first trainer and now they're like the real one right it's like you got to kiss a bunch of frogs to meet your prince or princess people are kissing pro uh, frogs when they go to planet fitness or snap or anytime yeah definitely and it um if you have a client that's never worked with a trainer before and say you're in the trm program and you're charging what you're worth yep they might they might see the prices that you're worth and be like good god this is not you know I can get I can get a trainer for half this price. Mm -hmm. um, well, let them go do it. Like that's going to prove your point to so much to a degree because they're paying someone twenty five dollars an hour or whatever. Like I guarantee it's not going to be. Um, they're they're gladly understand your price point at that at, right. you know in that junction. I mean, there's there's a reason that people don't buy their batteries or do their grocery shopping at the dollar general or dollarama right you buy you could buy 800 one dollar batteries or you could buy one 500 dollars battery that lasts you forever yeah right so this is this is that ten dollar gyms give you ten dollar gym value yeah and i mean most of our members i don't think you could pay them ten dollars to go to a planet fitness <laughs> like Hey, I'll give you ten dollars a month to work out there. They'd be like, "Hell no! Are you kidding? Yeah. Me? No." <laughs> Stand right here. Yeah, I yeah. get it. I get it. Your members are loyal. Yeah. Um. So let's bring it back to collaborations. Collaborations, Greg. How do you pick the companies, the people, the teams that you are going to collaborate with? Yeah, I think this is um 
a great way to scale your business in any kind of business, definitely in the gym business, definitely in PT, but you just have to think about who has the same customers or audience that I do. Yep. Um, and how can we help each other? So for us, like one thing that we do, cause we do a lot of different stuff, but one thing that works really well for us is collaborations with healthy restaurants. Ooh. They, they have the same, same, uh, audience as we do um and they want our members in their restaurant we want their restaurant goers in our gym so um like for instance one thing we did that worked really well with tokyo joe's um they're like a kind of asian fast casual like an asian chipotle almost um, okay. they put day passes on all their receipts for a month um in to return, hidden gym? yeah yeah okay and in, in return, um, we offered free appetizers to to our members that would go there. Every member um, that walked in and mentioned Hidden Gym got one free appetizer during that month. Brilliant. Brilliant. And so, okay. Yeah, that's just one example. We do lots of those. Um, okay. That's just one example. They have we've got the same audience. Um, let's each offer something of similar value to each other's audience and um, high five at the end of it. So, okay, before we go on to another collaboration, Greg, for all the listeners, how much did that cost you? I mean, maybe like two hours of time. You know, there was there was no actual expense because yep. it was, we traded digital assets. They actually printed some stuff to put up in the restaurant. So they, that may be $200, okay. um, but it, really it was just the time. Um, We've got our customer list. They've got theirs. We've got our social media accounts. Like it was just a time investment. Brilliant. Okay. Give me another example of a collaboration that has served Hidden Gym. Um, hotels. We do stuff with hotels. Oh, yeah. So you're in town and you need a place to work out. Um, yep. We will be the official hotel or official gym for hotels around town. Um, they want to be able to give that guest um, a concierge recommendation. Hey, I need to go catch my workout. Where should I go? Oh, we know this great local place. It's unlike anything you've been to before. Um, it's good for them. It's good for us because we'll get, we give them a discount on the day pass. So they feel like uh, Homewood Suites hooked them up um, and, and it's beneficial. So yeah, there's, um, there's a ton of those little examples out there. Um, apartment complexes are great. Um, a lot of apartment complexes now, you know, they, to compete, they provide gyms. Um, but th they're still fair game to uh, to play with, you know, to to collaborate with yeah. um, businesses like us. So, yeah. So it's it's the point there is that you want to find other companies who are working in a similar vein. Now, Greg, I know you're also affiliated with. Oh my gosh, I'm going to screw up the acronym. Is it I I D C A I D F A? What is the acronym? The biz the fitness business. One where you have spoken before recently, mm. you were on with what am I talking about? Yeah, Ursa. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that is an incredible rate, right? Because every time you're introduced, you're Greg McCoy, owner, CEO of Hidden Gym, right? And now you have exposure to their audience and you've been a guest speaker on their massive live seminars. I believe <gasps> you've been on podcasts before, always, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm doing it right now, technically. Uh, right. you know, I'm in the business of attracting, um, motivated personal trainers. Um, and so I do collaborations like this and talk to you guys and, um, uh, hopefully within the, the, the payback is we get new motivated trainers that want to work for hidden gym. So yeah. it's, that's the same with Ursa for them. It's like, put us in front of gym owners or maybe vendors, um, that we need good relationships with. So yeah, you gotta be, um, you. I, I went through a phase in my life where I said yes to way too much stuff with no real um, expectation of what to get out of it. And you can waste a lot of time doing that. So you have to be very selective and intentional about which of these relationships that you pursue, because it be can become a time suck yeah, um, and sure. you feel good because you're busy, but not it's not really doing anything. So you have to be mindful of that. I think another collaboration that we haven't brought up is your employees, who you hire, right? Because each one of them has their own entire universe, right? Like every time you hire a new employee, they already have, let's say, a significant other. They already have a group of friends that they have dinner parties with. They may already even have another gym that they work out at. 
But as soon as they become an employee of yours or a contractor, however you do it, they now are all hidden gym all the time, right? Yeah, that's a big one. I mean, um, and that that's and for employees that know how to leverage that, that can be a giant um, value add for them. Um, and in fact, um, Mike, um, that is going to manage the gym we're opening at the start yes. of this year. Yep. Um, he's got a huge, he's been in the industry for such a long time and his relationships is a big part of why we picked him for that position. Right. Um, so yeah, the, that, that is a big, uh, definitely a big part of it and, and a source of, um, of collaboration and it needs to be uh, reciprocal. Like we don't want to use our staff for, um, for their database. Right. Um, but they, they, you know, there's, there's lots of benefits for them too. They like to be able to hook up their friends and family and people that they know, and they know that they're going to get a good experience if they refer them. So yeah. um, it works really good. So what would you say are the top three, uh, I guess, either verticals of collaboration? Like what has served you the best in terms of organic versus paid, right? Cause we could say we're collaborating with Facebook ads, uh, but not really. Right. So where would you say the best referral, the best golden 50 sources to use TRM terminology? Sure. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's our, it's our member base. Um, number one by a two mile shot, like, um, you know, we're, we're always working and collaborating with them. Um, and then I would say it probably all falls under that umbrella. Like everything else is a pretty distant second, but, um, one cool thing, for instance, and this is a great little play for gym owners or trainers, but, um, behavior research will show you that when someone makes a major change in their life, um, that's when they're more likely to make some other positive changes. So for instance, we kind of took, uh, that, um, caveat of info. And we're like, okay, who's making major changes that we can talk to um, new homeowners? Okay, you just bought a home within five miles of Hidden Gym. We want to make sure that you know that you're that you're. This is your local gym. Yep. So we've got members, a ton of them that are in real estate. So it's a, you know, it's providing them with those. How do we get in your new homeowner packets? Yep. Um, things like that, and that so that all that kind of falls within the member base, like that's one of the cool things with the gym because you yeah. know, a, a couple thousand people with all their own networks, you you really are like, oh, this is like endless possibilities of things we could do um, within within the gym. That's brilliant. You know who else I it just came to mind? Hairdressers yep. or salons because A, people will go to people who are local and B, they talk nonstop. And how often does the average person complain about their weight or how unhappy they are with their body or how unhappy they are with their partner's body? And yeah. you get yourself a salon owner or just a, an artist and man, your business card could go so far. Greg, that's so brilliant. Yeah, those are those are great ones. Those um, generally, um, not to pigeonhole, but usually they're girls. Um, and I always recommend trainers. If you're gonna um, if you're gonna give some sessions away, that is one to do it on. Like trade out with your trade out with your stylist, um, and it'll pay dividends. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Okay. Oh my god, Greg. Okay. Not that that wasn't probably the most valuable part of today's talk. Give <laughs> your give your salon owner free sessions, yeah. but give me something that we can kind of wrap up strategic collaborations. Yeah, I think it, um, and this is at least the way I work, you know, if you're like a, um, you like to focus and um, put a pen to paper and quiet, or maybe you're a collaborative by nature and you rather have a brainstorming session with somebody, yeah. just spend some time um, really listing um, who shares the same customer base as you. Sure. And then, um, and then start, you know, just start one at a time, uh, start small and, and come up with ways that you can, um, in a way that's respectful of your customer, cause you don't want to solicit your yes. customers, yep. but what can I offer to my customers that would be a benefit to them? And in exchange, what can we offer to their customers that will attract them to me and, um, where everyone feels like they've won in that scenario. And it's really, um, once you kind of get on a roll, and you get a few successful ones under your belt, um, it, uh, your mind really opens up. So I think 
kind of brainstorm is step one and then start trying it is um is step two and then you know kind of look back what went good what didn't and you'll really start to open up what all is possible um in a system like that greg as always brilliant shiny gold nuggets absolutely love it thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing your wisdom and experience with us we appreciate it yeah you're so welcome thank you guys i hope you enjoyed the show tune in each week and uh, i will see you next time Greg, you just stole my outro. <laughs> what is your, uh, remind us your Instagram, please, and the Instagram of the gym so you guys can see how Hidden Gym does things. Go ahead. Yeah, my personal Instagram is greg.w.mccoy. Now is a good time to follow me because we just released our annual spoof Christmas photos. Um, so enjoy those if you're watching this in December. Um, and then the gym is hidden underscore gym. Um, so you can find us Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all over. Perfect. All right, guys, if you found value in today's episode, please share it on your Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Don't forget to subscribe on whatever podcast platform you are currently listening to us, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, or Spotify. We just want to impact and serve as much as possible. Please also do not miss an episode. So make sure you're tuning in live on our Facebook page every week. Uh, and make sure that you catch up. That's Trainer Revenue Multiplier on Facebook. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and have an amazing day.